give a response to several questions about the use of i, which is basically the square root of um, negative 1, and the idea that since you can't take the square root of negative 1, how can, you, can, how, how can this be a number or how can you use it? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a um, historical perspective. As far as use of numbers, when we dig up other civilizations and kind of see what they did and what they used, when we look at the numbers, everybody basically had a word for 1, 2, 3, and etc. So 1, 2, 3, and all the rest of the numbers, we call natural numbers because everybody kind of used them. It was natural to have a use for those numbers and words for those numbers. Zero was not natural because when we dig up societies, we don't find the more words for zero. Other than maybe two. There's about two societies that we did dig up and we found words for zero. That was the Egyptian um, civilization and the Mayan um, civilization. We dug them up and we had words for zero. Otherwise, we really didn't find them. So zero is relatively new. We've just been using it uh, for the last two or three hundred years. Another new set of numbers that um, is relatively new are the negative numbers. Negative numbers, again, we don't find that usage. Um, you know, very light or not at all, but very, basically started using it within the last two or three hundred years. Um, the next number is the letter I. I was developed somewhere in the 1700s by a mathematician named Euler, Euler, Euler should I say. Euler did a lot of great math work, not just with the I's. Euler's work was only known to mathematicians, so it wasn't holistically known. Mathematicians use I because they love the work with math. We really adopted I during the space program when we needed to do a lot of engineering work with square roots in order to figure out distances and rates and times. This is what they were running into, and this is kind of how the popularity of roots came, especially in the engineering realm. Lots of roots are used in the um, engineering. But whenever a negative number appears under the root, this is typically what happens. We break that up into a negative 1 times the number. The number itself can be simplified, so square root of 4 is 2. But the negative 1 is actually left underneath the root. Engineers basically masked the square root of negative 1 by just calling it i. Didn't get rid of it, but we just called it i. Now, here's the problem with i, or 2i, or counting using i units. I know what 2 is. If 2 is the answer, that means I need 2 gallons, or I need 2 feet, or I need um, 2 tons. I need 2 units of something. A 2i unit, no one knows what that is a measurement of. What, How long is 2i as opposed to how long is 2? So the idea of having i eliminates the idea that you can measure anything with it, or it could be useful. Engineers purposely kept I around because even though I was not useful itself, the idea is that if you kept using I in the process, and if you had one I multiplied with another I somewhere in the process, you would have an I squared. And I squared eliminates the root, and you get the negative 1. And negative 1 is useful because we can measure, because negative 1 does measure things. Negative 1 could be a temperature. Negative 1 could be the idea that, you, that the distance is going backwards. So that was a great asset to keep working with the equations that, that, that contain i and eventually get an i squared. Another great result was i cubed. i cubed is essentially i squared times i. The i squared is the negative 1. And we're still left with i. So i cubed is still imaginary. But the great thing about it is that it reduces quickly. It reduces from an i cubed all the way down to a negative i. And so reduction in engineering is fantastic. We like to reduce as much as we can. Now, the greatest thing to happen with i, or engineer, is to keep working until you got an i to the fourth i to the fourth is the equivalent of saying i squared times i squared, which is a negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. So getting an i to the fourth power would be equivalent of having 1, and that really simplifies the process. So 
engineers love working till they got to get this point. It doesn't happen that often, but it does happen and lets you know you can have some real results.